Привет, товарищ. Позволь мне взижу вас в land of glory. Yeah, my Russian isn't quite the best. Welcome, people of the internet. My name is Zolmesh. Have you ever wondered what if the Soviets... Yes, of course you've had, like, literally you clicked on the video for that. So, what changes? What needs to happen for the Soviets to, quote, win the Cold War? How convenient you guys did that job for me. Hell, at this point, you guys should be making the videos for me. Wait, that's not such a bad idea. Anyways, strategic victory. What does this mean? Well, strategically winning the Cold War. Thank you, Captain Obvious, but that's not what I was asking for. The meaning of a strategic victory. A strategic victory is a victory that brings long-term advantages to the victor and disturbs the enemy's ability to wage war. So, what does the Soviet Union need to do to achieve this? Well, it has to have the United States unable to compete with it militarily and economically in the world stage. Simple enough. Let's see what the Soviets could possibly do. Uh-huh. Well, there is no shortage of sources for any scenario, so yeah, let's begin, shall we? Any minor changes could change history like we've never seen it before. Hitler being an artist might not see the rise of fascism. Stalin continuing to be a pope might have led to Trotsky winning. Me taking a shit now or holding it will lead to me dance like a monkey and give somebody motivation to become a dancer. Like seriously, if I can dance in public like a cracked up spider monkey, what's stopping you from becoming the next BTS or Britain's Got Talent star? Okay, went off track here. Anyways, I'll be going by the oldest time where I see the Soviets winning. So, after Lenin's death. Although there are possibilities where the Soviet Union could have, you know, achieved far greater during the Civil War, let's take it after the Civil War has ended and it's implementing its policies currently. Well, not currently. At this period of time. As the Soviets build up their nation from the Civil War, they opened a network where all communists can join in the struggle against capitalism. A European Workers' Agency to be opened for coordinating workers in protests, strikes and revolts. France and Germany are prime for these types of organized crime, I mean unions. The Balkans also isn't far off the watch list, as a special someone will be making an appearance. Wink. One of the key alterations in this timeline is how the Soviets react to the Nazis' actions in Germany. Hitler and his supporters get targeted with sabotage to disrupt their speeches, to destroy any form of organization while keeping communist gatherings safe and arming the workers. At each step that Hitler takes, the Soviets try to diminish their successes and make it costly. They try to bribe, they try to free other far-left radicals, and imprison far right ones. When Hitler finally goes to decide to take charge in the coup, the military and the workers rise up against him in a three-way civil war that will turn into a two-way civil war with the communists taking the south in Prussia and the military junta having the north. France will suffer with more fierce worker strikes, protests and mutinies in the military to the point where it's at the verge of civil war, just like Germany. Further south, Spain's civil war ignites earlier, and with the lack of funding and support, the Republicans destroy the Nationalists. With personal help from Bukharin... Bukharin? Wasn't he purged? Or is he about to get purged? Well, I'm pretty sure that most of you actually don't know Bukharin, so it's this funny mustache man which awfully resembles Trotsky. Wow, people really did look alike back then. Oh well, moving along. In this timeline, both Bukharin and Trotsky, that held two opposing views on how to run a socialist revolution and achieve communism, they decide that first the enemies of the workers should be dealt with, 
and leave Stalin with his socialism one state ideals work for the Soviet Union. Trotsky was given the task to be a military general and weapons exporter to workers, while Bukharin a propagandist and political figure for the Third International. While Stalin held the Union at home, supporting their efforts. Oh buddy, we got three funny mustache men. Woohoo! <laughs> Imagine, three people with funny mustaches, maybe a beard here or there, and wearing an officer's uniform. That would be hilarious, wouldn't it? With Bukharin mostly focused on Europe, Trotsky was sent to East China, supporting fellow communists and coordinating attacks against the Kuomintang. Kuomintang? Why does that sound like a band's name? They bribed the warlords of the north and west of China, uniting into a large front against the nationalists, leading into the civil war only ending, just like in our own timeline, as the Japanese saw an opportunity to enter from the north and sea to occupy its share of land, expanding its imperialist goals. After being warned of any further aggressions into China, the Japanese continued moving forward, causing the cease of hostilities from the nationalists and communists and wage a war against the Japanese threat. Trotsky allows Mao to continue with his struggles in China and gives him full control of communist forces within China, as he leaves and goes to his new mission in South America. Now, you're asking to yourself, how is it possible for the Soviets to be so efficient? How could they just pump and pump weapons in a rate that you can say it's a war economy state? Well, the answer lies in the question itself. The Soviets never saw the end of the civil war as the actual end to hostilities. Politically, yes. But, by its industry and strategy, not. The key things driving its economy is its rapid industry growth. Workers from all around the world start going to the Soviet Union for better life and guarantee work. Factories for war have skyrocketed to the point where the Soviets start to create surplus so large that it has no other choice but to export it and use it. With the profit from said factories, it is allocated into education, healthcare, granting higher standards of living, coupled with affordable housing, causes the, quote, rich West to look at them with envy. The stage is set. China in flames, Europe full with radical movements. It's only a matter of time before something goes off, and that is the French Civil War. From this situation, a domino effect happens throughout Europe. Poland joins the German Civil War, Britain and French colonies uniting in a war against French socialists, Italy seeing its opportunity strikes at Yugoslavia together with Bulgaria, and finally the Soviets joining the German and French Civil War. This war will not be called World War II, quote unquote, but it will have another meaning and name. The Great Liberation.
now France, South Germany, Spain and the Soviet Union is overkill for its European conflict, but it sets the stage for the Americans to eventually save Britain from being invaded and not have Africa fall under revolution. Japan, being in a worse place than in our timeline, will not dare attack the Americans in any case, but it does seize French Asian colonies, but nonetheless the war will drive them out. In mainland Japan, bombardments will commence and it will last for decades. Europe falls to the communists, the Middle East and Asia as well. Africa is being divided from the north and the south, and it leaves the last bastions of capitalism in Australia, the Americas, and some islands around the world. A pseudo peace is set in the motion, as both sides are exhausted from fighting. But, nonetheless, the Soviets came out of this as victorious. It deprived the West from resources and removed them from the most populated places on Earth. As time goes by, the division from the First World and the Second World grows larger. Life expectancy, health, education, quality and true freedom accomplished by the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. It's been a hot minute since I last cracked a joke, so... Why did the Nazi cross the road? Because he hated waiting for the red light. <laughs> oh, thanks. I know, I know. I know the gold. Speaking of gold, want to support my channel? Do leave a like and subscribe. It does help a lot. If you want to aid me in making this a more regular thing, then you can donate to my Patreon. You don't have to. You can just tip like $2 and that's it. But I'm not forcing to. If you're not able to pay, I'm all okay. I want to keep this channel ad free. I don't want any ads. And I also don't want sponsors. Unless it's something related to education. Not entertaining though. I don't want, uh, God forbids, being sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, even though that would be hilarious. Anyways, thank you for watching, comrades. Wow, sounds weird saying it like that way. Anyways. Thanks for watching. Now, hit that music. Ah, I need to drink.